Good morning. So this morning we're going to start with a little background story. Romans 13 makes sense outside of context, but makes a lot more sense inside context. So to describe it, your state government is what Paul worked for. He worked for the Jewish council, right? And we know what he was doing. He was going out to gather up Christians so that they could put them on trial and kill them. The state government was the nice guys. The federal government was a little stronger when it came to hating Christians. Nero had his, you know, pastime of, he had this lovely garden, and he wanted it lit all night. So what he would do is take Christians, tie them up on poles, and light them on fire. So he could have a nice fire at night. He would also have them in sheep's clothing, send them out so the dogs could eat them. So you have to realize, when, when we're talking Romans 13, we don't want to think about a government that's kind of nice. We're going to think about the state government that's nicer because at least you get a trial and then you get hopefully stoned or put to death pretty quickly. Now, your national government in Rome generally wants to see you tortured and destroyed completely. So today we're talking about Romans 13. And in the middle of it, there's this phrase. Love your neighbor. Romans 12 had the phrase, let love be without hypocrisy. Romans 13 has, love your neighbor as yourself. So often we'll get focused on this and but we sometimes forget the order of things. We do. We're like, do I think the way I'm supposed to be thinking? Do I say the things I'm supposed to be saying? And do I do the things I'm supposed to be doing? And we start with that. The problem is God doesn't start with that. He says, on these two commandments based the whole law and the prophets. Everything starts here. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. And there's a second commandment like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, that's where everything starts. That's where everything begins. He doesn't say, well, do you think the right thoughts? Well, do you, do you talk the right talk? Do you do the right things? He says, no. It begins with this of love. And then everything is built on it. Romans chapter 13, starting in verse 1. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good and you will be, have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is the minister of God, an avenger of those who bring wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For rulers are servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. Render to all whom what is due them, tax to whom taxes do, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Most likely when he's saying this, he's talking about those ministers that are actually appointed by God. He is most likely talking about that state government. And we know what that state government allowed him to do. He had letters from them that said he can go out and gather up the Christians. He was there when Stephen was stoned. He was holding the coats so they could do the stoning without messing up their nice coats. And when he speaks of them, he says this. Obey the government. Obey those who rule over you. They are appointed by God. Do not do evil. For they will carry it out on you. Now think about this. When you look at Rome, that's not what was happening. The Christians were dying under their government. Nero was killing them for no other reason than they had strange superstitions. They drank blood and ate human flesh. And so he decided, I'm going to kill them. And they were doing nothing more than taking communion. They were doing nothing more than celebrating Christ. But he tells them this, and he says, do good, and you will have no fear of them. 
Because too often they would get caught in that moment. Too often we will get caught in that moment. And what was he saying? He was saying, love your neighbor. He said, you know how to win this Roman government, this state government that hates us. Do you know how to win them? I'm going to tell you it's a magic word. It's four letters and it's actually a good word. Love. Love your neighbor. And when he says this, he continues on with this thought. In the middle of all this, he continues to talk about love because of the simple fact that there was only one way they were going to win the Romans. There had been people who tried to fight the Roman government. They just got killed off. Carthians, Ptolemies, they all died out. Great story, huh? And then there were the Christians. Christians decided not to fight their government. And they won the Roman government. But he continues with this concept of loving your neighbor. Romans chapter 13, starting in verse 8. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For this, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. If there are any other commandments, it is summed up in this saying. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It's strange how often we'll get caught up on the rules, and that's what he starts with. He says, there are these commandments, da, 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 da. let me list a few, and then what's he say? And there's some other ones, too. Do you notice he doesn't even finish his sentence? He's like, and there's other commandments, too. Because in comparison, the commandments become of so little an issue when love is already the answer. Because if I love you, there is no way I'm going to kill you. It just doesn't fit. If I love you, I don't steal from you. I don't want to take what's yours. If I love you, I don't have to start asking these questions and saying, well, does God allow it? Instead, I ask the question, do I love you? And everything else falls into that order. And he talks about our continuous debt. He said, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. And he tells us how this continuous debt is one in which I love you as much as I love myself. And, and I was trying to grasp this and figure out how this really worked. And so I, I thought of a mirror. You know, you look into a mirror, you see yourself and you should love everybody that much. And unless you're really narcissistic and you just love yourself that much, it doesn't work very well. I look in a mirror and I don't go, oh, that's perfection. Sorry, guys. I'm five foot tall. I'm an elf. It's all good. But I did see, I did see a sign that I liked. And, and I know this, this is a strange sign. It's cardboard, as you can tell. Very nice cardboard, actually. See? How many of y'all have ever seen a sign like this? Y'all seen signs like this? How many of you have ever seen a sign like that and said, I'm hungry? You, you look at that and you say, wait, wait. They put out a sign that says, we'll work for food because they're hungry. And I love them as myself. And so what do I say? I'm hungry. He has a sign saying, we'll work for food. And I personally respond with, well, I'm hungry. What would I do? Because when I look at a mirror, it's not going to work. I'm not going to say, well, you look like me. I love you. No. But if I see a sign like this, I can review it. I can see a sign on the street and say, we'll work for food. And I'm thinking, I'm hungry. Because I love that person the way that I love myself. And I don't go, oh, I'm hungry. Let's ignore that. I, I honestly, I love food. I'm not going to go, I'm hungry. Let me wait. Now, I, I may put it off until there's a good time, but I'm not going to forever put off eating. But when I see somebody else with a sign that says, I'm hungry, 
if I love them like I love myself, then I feel the way that they feel. I look at that and I say, you're hungry, I'm hungry. And we look at people completely differently as this debt. Have you ever thought of yourself as a debtor to everyone you meet? You think about it, you owe everyone. You, you just met this person, you owe them something already. You've never even spoken a word and the first time you talk to them, you already owe them. You already owe them love. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. You've done all the rules. By loving your neighbor, you have done all the rules when you see people as yourself. Romans chapter 13, starting in verse 11. Do this, knowing the time that is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now, salvation is near to us than when we believed. The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness. Put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lust. Same still applies, doesn't it? I don't go out carousing and in fits of drunkenness if I love my neighbor. I don't do those things which God doesn't want from me if I love my neighbor. It's very easy to see God as a judge with, with rules and restrictions and do this and don't do that and miss the point in the beginning. Because it's one thing if I come up to you and I'm like, well, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do that. Sit still, don't move, be quiet. I'm just describing what I say to my son in church every day. But you know what? Did you? I, I've started changing that. I've started changing the way I'll talk to my son in church, by the way. I've started doing this. I don't know which direction it is. I forget completely. It means worship. Because I don't care anymore. I don't care if my son sits there perfectly quiet, or if he makes too much noise, or if he whatever. I don't care about the stupid rules anymore. You know what I care about? Does he come here and worship God? Now, if your choice is... To worship God and you are free to worship God and you worship God but I don't know you make too much noise okay sorry you're, you're, you're not perfectly still oh. so what because the person who comes in and sees the rules and does the rules and does everything but misses the point now if you sit here and that's how you worship and that's how you are so in tune with God that you're just sitting there and you don't move Praise God. But getting things out of order causes a lot of problems. He tells us that we are near. He doesn't say these things without hope. He talks about hope. Have you ever noticed that you're always closer to death? Every day you're closer to death. Every day you're one step closer to going home to your reward, however that happens. Whether he comes back, whether you die, no matter what, you're one step closer. Today, your salvation is nearer than it's ever been. And he says, because of that. Did you notice that? It wasn't, do these things, and then there's that hope of heaven at the back end. He says at the beginning, doesn't he? He starts with, salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. The night is almost gone. Day is near. Therefore, right? Therefore, do the things that God wants us to do. Therefore, carry out God's will. Therefore, let's keep things in order and begin with what he said. Love. So then we ask ourselves, how do we apply this? How do I know when I love as my neighbor? 
How do I, how do I know when my neighbor is loved as myself? Now, now, we talked about the sign of getting in somebody else's shoes, as we used to say, right? You know, trying somebody else's shoes on. And it works if you have small feet. But if you try to put on my shoes, you're just going to hurt all day. So you, so you think about this. You put on someone's shoes, and the idea was that you would feel what they feel. But you won't. You'll still feel what you feel. But instead, you pretend you're in their situation. You say, if I, I was there and I, I was on the street corner and I had this sign up. You know, if, if I'm sitting on a street corner and I have this sign up, what would I want? You know, what would I want for me if I had this sign? I mean, it, it's, it's easy to understand that if I have a sign that says, we're work for food. I probably want something. I probably want food. And putting myself in that position, I go, well, you know, they, they may eat. They may have plenty. They may have. You know what? I still want to eat. I, you know, I, I probably eat more than my 2,000 calories a day. Does that mean I go, well, I'm not hungry. I may still be hungry. I may still have the desire for food. And I put myself and I look at my neighbor. And we're going to try this today. I want you to look at your neighbor. They're next to you, by the way. I'm not your neighbor. I'm, I'm up here. Look at your neighbor. And I want you to look, to look at them and think, they have needs too. Right? Too often we come to church and it's very isolated. And you look straight forward and you don't think about those around you. I want you to look at some of your neighbors. Just look at them and go, hi. And now imagine the things you could do to fill some of those needs. I, I, don't, I don't know who you're sitting next to. You may be sitting next to somebody who you're like, you know what, I need to just talk to them. Huh? I love my neighbor, because if I was in their situation, I'd want somebody to come talk to them. Wow, you just got love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, I, I see them, they're, they're struggling. Oh, maybe I should take them out to lunch today. Okay. Maybe that's what I would do seeing that situation. And look at people, and instead of looking at them and going, well, you know, I'll make you in my image, Instead, look at them and go, well, if I was in their position, I would want. And then guess what happens? Everything in the law kind of disappears. It goes, I'm not going to do any of those wicked things. Because I care about you too much to do those wicked things. And ask yourself how you would really want to be treated. How you would really want to be in that situation and what you can do. Because if you miss this, the rest of the rules and laws and commandments, nothing, because you missed the base. And if you don't love your neighbor, then you don't love God. First John's very clear on that. So we ask how it would change us. And it would change everything. Do you imagine if, if your neighbor was actually looking out for you and you were actually looking out for your neighbor? It, it'd be the greatest place to be. It would be the happiest place on earth. It would be Disneyland, except with one thing. It's not fake. It would be joy because you're loving, you're giving, and being blessed. They're receiving, being blessed, and everybody gets blessed the whole time. But apart from Christ, none of this is even possible, right? Without, without God changing us and allowing us to love and have reason and have hope, none of this is even really possible for us. Titus 3.5 put it this way, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which were done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Today, if there is anyone who has not received Christ, having heard his word, having believed that Jesus is Lord, having confessed him as Lord, repenting of your sins, being buried with him so you can live for him, with, for him, with that hope that drives you onward. Or if there's anyone who just needs prayers, or there's anybody who wants to join in the church, we ask you to come now as you stand and as you sing. Let me hide my
myself in thee.